I got a uh, actually an 18 foot uh, ray dome, a, a geodesic radar dome from a former <laughs> NATO base up in Canada. And those guys are, are amateurs as well. They're doing actually amateur radio astronomy in a, a bigger ray dome. And this was kind of in their spare parts pile. They found my channel and they said, hey, do you want to come up to Canada and pick up this uh, NATO surplus radar dome? So that was a, an adventure. And that's uh, that's one of my favorite ones. That's I'm still working on setting that up. So what was it like at the border when you were trying to come back with that? <laughs> I grew up in Alaska. I grew up on an island ah. outside of Juneau, and we were basically very off-grid, very uh, subsistence lifestyle, um, and you couldn't really throw a lot of stuff away and you couldn't just go to the store when something broke. So if, uh, right. you know, if we had some equipment that broke, we would try to recycle it, reuse it, uh, repurpose it in basically any way possible. And we used uh, radios quite a bit because we were, you know, out, uh, away from town. We had uh, Marine VHF for boats. We had CB radios, uh, some ham radio. Um, and, uh, we actually had a radio telephone. So our way to contact people to get onto, the old uh, dial-up phone network was a uh, basically a semi-duplex uh, UHF Motorola system. So that was my early introduction to radio. It, it's really a remarkable story because what Gabe does is more than what any other ham, even Tom here, uh, has has done in in my humble opinion in terms of uh, recycling garbageola and using it in great ways. So. Uh, Gabe, this is your website right here. Save it for parts. Right. Yeah. That's, uh, actually my website and my YouTube channel. So I've been, uh, that's been kind of my motto since I was a little kid, save it for parts. And I've, uh, slowly kind of turned that into a, a YouTube, uh, program, ongoing, uh, YouTube videos, and then a, a small website where I, I show off some of my projects. So not just ham radio, but, uh, a lot of different, uh, different, topics and and different projects that i do all over the map it's it's yeah. so wonderful here are just a few quick images to give you an idea on what's mm -hmm. on gabe's youtube channel these are all from videos here we have how to get free satellite dishes oh boy that's a great one how to hack Weingard portable satellite dishes uh, this is just before the police came the fbi came to your door and, <laughs> and knocked on it uh, hearing the International Space Station, the easy way. All right, we want that. How to receive and decode L-band weather satellites. Oh, my goodness, what you are into here is unbelievable. Here's an answering machine for your ham radio. He beta testing a product that, that was sent to Gabe. We're not going to tell you what this is. You have to go to the website. But it does look like an answering machine uh, in, a, in a sense. And then uh, this one which you put up recently, which I thought was fantastic. Better and more hackable than a bowfang. Your first look at this Quan. How do you pronounce that anyway? Quan uh, Sheng? I call it a, I call it a bowfang <laughs> K5. Yeah. But what yeah, about there's the a few Quan different Sheng? pronunciations, I think, but uh, there are, <laughs> there are kind of a lot of similar hardware underneath. I think all the different companies sort of bootleg each other and then when they when they come out with a popular one they stick with that name so that's that's the way i understand it but this is the one that you set up so that you could uh you could you could use it basically to see what's on on any frequencies around you right you could carry it around like a sniffer yeah there's some custom firmware which i nothing that i've developed it's firmware that other people have developed but you can easily drop different uh, firmware programs onto this Kuangsheng radio and yeah one of them has a spectrum analyzer there's stuff that'll get you into very out of band uh, capabilities with the hardware which um you know would not be recommended for uh, for licensing purposes but uh, it's very flexible it's uh, basically a software defined radio under the hood so it's uh, it can do a lot of stuff All right so, uh, Gabe, when did you get into uh, recyc electronic recycling? Is this uh, something well, that you've always had a passion for, or did you just kind of develop it? Well, it's it's kind of based on my upbringing. I uh, and I uh, 
kind of went from there. When I went to college, I would, you know, scrounge around for computer equipment, uh, try to get stuff as cheap as possible, rebuild things that were being thrown out uh, by the college or by other folks around. And uh, yeah, just uh, went from there, I guess. And so, so an, advanced, you, an, an advanced degree in dumpster diving, right? Uh, essentially, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I live on a farm about 20 miles from the nearest thing you could possibly call a town. Hmm. So uh, we do a lot of uh, agricultural recycling here, too. Sure. I find a lot of scrap on the road and, uh, you know, turn it into something useful. Yep. Uh, did you come down to the lower 48 specifically for college, Gabe? Sort of, yeah. I, I did my undergraduate up in Alaska at UAF and uh, studied computer science and then came down to uh, Minnesota for a master's degree, also in computer science, and then kind of drifted out of that for various reasons. So I'm not directly in uh, the IT field, although I, I use that at my job a little bit and then I use it in a lot of my hobbies. So um, yeah, I ended up uh, liking it here, had more friends here after college. A lot of my Alaska friends had either moved away or, or done other things. So I ended up with uh, more connections uh, here in Minnesota. But you got your ham ticket when you were still in Alaska, right? I did. Yeah. When I was in college, uh, gosh, it's over, I think it's over 20 years now I've had my license and just a technician license. I've never, uh, never gotten around to getting, uh, uh upgrading that, but, uh, I use it occasionally and I'm, I'm usually doing more kind of esoteric stuff like the satellite stuff than I am getting on the air, getting on repeaters. So I'm, uh, uh maybe more of an experimental, uh, amateur than a, a traditional amateur in that, that regard. You're more like the original amateurs. I mean, right. <laughs> yeah. Maybe so. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, hams are uh, people who uh, pioneered a lot of stuff and still do. Mm -hmm. and, and so are you're resourceful. Writing, yeah, resourceful. Good word for that, Tom. Uh, so this is great. Now, now tell us a little bit about some things you've worked on in the last few years uh, that you've put together using uh, saving the parts kind of philosophy that you really thought were cool. Sure. So uh, around COVID, I got into software defined radio, and that was kind of my introduction to the more uh, more recent side of some of the the radio stuff I've been doing. Um, software defined radio is is a really cool kind of subset of, of radio technology, ham radio stuff. And basically, I started looking into what can I do with that. What interesting things can I listen to with one of these twenty dollar SDR uh, devices? It's just you know if you're not familiar with it, it's a little USB device that plugs into your computer gives you reception from yep. like two megahertz to, you know, 1.7 gigahertz. And you can get other ones that will transmit as well. So started looking into what can I do very cheaply. The, the device is cheap. I can go out and dumpster dive satellite dishes or make antennas out of, you know, scrap copper wire, scrap equipment, dumpster dive antennas. Um, the satellite stuff really got popular on my YouTube channel. So I started doing more of that with... Uh, a lot of these uh, C-band dishes, the big, you know, the big, ugly satellite dishes that you used to have in your yard in the 1980s, everybody wants those gone. So if you look around on Craigslist or Facebook, people have these C-band dishes that they want out of the yard. They'll give them away if you're willing to come over and take it down. So I have a number of those that I have repurposed for uh, weather satellites, um, both low Earth orbit and geostationary orbit weather satellites. There are some scientific satellites that are pretty cool. There's some European ones that send down like interesting, you know, thermal data, cloud data, radar stuff. There's uh, ham sats, of course, you can get on uh, ham repeaters with uh, CubeSats. International Space Station is a popular one. Um, and then uh, I've gotten into some kind of other oddball things, some private satellites, some military ones that are sending down things you can overhear as an amateur or as just a casual listener. Uh, you can't really interact with them in other ways, but it's interesting to see what they're what they're sending down and what's being broadcast from some of these systems. Yeah, you posted. Well, what, what's, the, what's, the, what's the best junk you've ever found and reused? Oh boy, that's a that's a hard one. Recently, um, I I got a hold of a globe projector, so it's a basically this uh, two foot sphere with a projector in the bottom and it projects a spherical uh image onto it so you can get basically a live view of the earth and these you see these at like science museums at natural history museums and the university was actually mm -hmm. getting rid of it it had a little bit of damage so i found that pretty cheap 
Um, another big one recently, I, I got a, uh, actually an 18 foot, uh, ray dome, a, a geodesic radar dome from a former <laughs> NATO base up in Canada. And those guys are, are amateurs as well. They're doing actually amateur radio astronomy in a, a bigger ray dome. And this was kind of in their spare parts pile. They found my channel and they said, Hey, do you want to come up to Canada and pick up this, uh, NATO surplus radar dome? So that was a, an adventure. And that's, uh, that's one of my favorite ones. That's I'm still working on setting that up. So what was it like at the border when you were trying to come back with that? <laughs> that was interesting. We went through, we got to the border about probably 1 a.m. And there was just one old guy working and he looked in the truck and he said, why do you have this? And I gave him the, you know, showed him the um, the invoice if there were any taxes or whatever. And he said, why was this so cheap? It was just, you know, a couple hundred dollars. And we said, well, it's junk basically. And so he was amused, but he said, yeah, get out of here, kid. You know, we don't want to deal with this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was interesting. But. So uh, the 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 primary ways you do this dumpster diving in your area, let's say, rather than having to go up to Canada, is how do you find this stuff? What are the clues here for all of us? Sure. Um, it really varies. You know, there's there's everything from the traditional, you know, you, you go behind a warehouse and you find a dumpster and you see what's in there, that sort of thing, um, which sometimes they chase you out. Sometimes they're cool with it. Um mm -hmm. There are a ton of surplus stores that I go to. So uh, around here we have uh, Axeman surplus, which gets a lot of industrial surplus uh, leftovers from companies that have gone out of business. Uh, we have a university surplus store that has all the university stuff that they no longer want. And a lot of a lot of colleges will have something like that. There's a state surplus warehouse because we're in uh, we have a state capital right here. So all of the state vehicles, uh, electronics, radio equipment shows up there. Uh, auction sites are a big one. So uh, there are some government surplus auctions. Whenever a school district gets rid of something or a police department gets rid of something, I have found, you know, tons of like police radios. I found school district computers. I found all kinds of stuff at those <coughs> auctions for pennies on the dollar, essentially. Um, and then just, just kind of poking around on, uh, you know, uh, Craigslist used to be big. Facebook <coughs> has really taken over from Craigslist here locally, but you can find things, uh, like I said, big C-band uh, satellite dishes, uh, ham radio towers when somebody buys a house from a former uh, amateur operator and they say, what is this 50-foot tower in my yard? Somebody come take it down, you know? So that's that's the kind of thing you can find if you if you snoop around enough on, uh, on uh, classified sites. Wow, so if we were at your place now, <laughs> and we wandered out in the backyard, uh, and we looked up on your roof too. What kind of antennas would we see around there? What, did it, what does it look like? Well, it's a bit of a mess. I I've been trying to set up a more of a traditional ham shack, so I have room for some of my my you know base station radios. But uh, the garage right now has the antenna farm, so I have a, a C band dish uh, looking at one of the geostationary weather satellites. I have a mobile uh, S-band dish, which I can track low Earth orbit satellites. And that's a repurposed one from, uh, it used to be an RV dish, but I've kind of hacked that one. I have a UHF, I think it's a folded dipole. Uh, used to be a public safety for, uh, I think it was uh, 450 megahertz, but I played with a little bit for um, for 70 centimeter. And I mostly just use that as a uh, receiver to listen to local repeaters. And then I have a couple other smaller satellite dishes that kind of, come and go as I have uh, different projects with them. So, so that's what I have at the moment. I, I have a scanner antenna up there too. I live stream the um, local police scanner, which is unfortunately being encrypted later this year. So I'll probably have to just shut down my stream on that. But, uh, but that's some of what's up there. So, Wow. Tom, what do you think? I uh, wonder, do you have neighbors? <laughs> yeah, there's, uh, <laughs> as far as I know, everybody's uh, cool with it. I, I definitely, I'm the, the Beverly Hillbillies of, of this block. I think the guy across from me, you know, takes a little more care of his yard and, and, uh, you know, mine doesn't look as nice. Cause I'm, I'm usually up on the roof doing, uh, antennas and I don't mow the yard as often, but, uh, um, yeah, the neighbors seem, uh, seem to, to, to mostly be okay with me. So, <laughs> oh man, okay. you, you're, you're just fantastic. Now, again, everybody, we want to direct you to, uh, Gabe's information on his YouTube site, which is the best. You can go to his webpage too. So uh, save it for parts, save it for parts, all one word, dot com for the website or on YouTube, do save it for parts. And you'll see some incredible videos. It's inspiring. 
for me, you know, uh, I'm old enough now that I, I don't run around on the roof and do all this kind of stuff. But boy, it brings back a lot of memories. When I used to go dumpster diving, I don't think I ever told you this, Tom, at the telephone company there near O'Hare Airport. And uh, pulled out all kinds of equipment and wire and everything day after day from the from this big uh, area telephone company, and I loved it. I loved it. And occasionally they would spot me back there, and they didn't really care. Difficulty was getting some of the stuff home on my bike, but uh, hey, you do what you got to do. <laughs> yeah, I've been yeah. there. I've been I've been biking silly things around and and yeah. silly things on my car that shouldn't have been on the roof, maybe. But uh... <laughs> all right. All right. Thanks uh, so much, Gabe. Uh, we really appreciate you and your work, your service to not just the ham community, but beyond. Oh, and so uh, we'll do it again. If you get anything really interesting that's directly ham related, let us know. All right. And uh, we'll jump right on it. Uh, this is Ham Radio Perspectives. I'm Quinn K8QS. I'm Tom WA9TDD. And we've been here with Gabe KL1F. Bye. We'll see you all later, gang.